As a successful lawyer, I have not lost any case. And this is because I take my time researching on cases in order to outsmart my opponents. And that is the key to success. Okay. <laughs> I hear you, Dad. It's not a problem. Okay. I'll do my best. That's my goal. So you've gotten your things ready? Yep. Okay. All set. So well, until I'm sure that it's not September conference. Same here. Seriously. Mm -hmm. Same here. Mm -hmm. Everything else. Yet everything. Are you serious? Yeah. I'm saying. You can say that Let's again. Check for that An A. In Sok 111. Who could this person be? Oh my god. Please, yeah, I better be on my way now. Gone. Do you know what? I got a C in sub one one one. You know, let my people go. The department is able to see it to consider the cases. Yes, over seventy percent failed the course. What you know is against the university norm. At least sixty must pass the course. So you're trying to say that um, they're going to upgrade? Yes, it's a usual practice. It happens all the time. What? Someone made an A. Are you certain of that? Yes, I'm very certain. Someone made an A. And who could that be? Exactly what I'm here to find out. You know, I want to know that wizard that could make an A in such a difficult course. And I'm here to make you help me find out. What? Well, you know it's against the department practice. I can't do that. I know. Only when it's intended as mischief. Okay? Don't even go there. I just want to know so I can just go and, you know, congratulate the person. That's all. That's all. That's all. Are you sure that's all? Please. It's all right. I'll see what I can do then. I like your hair. It's really nice. Oh, you look so beautiful. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs>
dinas. Five dinas. You are easy. Yes, I am. Okay. I'll be there. Um, congratulations. About what? You are the only one in this class that made an A in Sock 111. How did you know? My father, an engineer, taught me that I should find out whatever tickles my curiosity. Oh, that's serious. <laughs> Not as serious as making an A in Sock 111. So? I'm a curious type last. One of your father's lessons? <laughs> we can call it that. Well, my father told me that curiosity killed the cat. And there will be a price to pay. There is no price to pay in this one, okay? Fair enough. Um, I just came to say congratulations. Thank you. Okay, I'll run along, okay? That's fine by me. looking for you at the classroom but I didn't see you there. Uh, I, I went to the library on the research. Was there anything specific? Um, not really. I just wanted to, you know, chat with you and talk with you. That's, that's all. Mm. I see. No, you don't see shit. What is wrong with you? Don't you get it? When a woman wants to chat, it means take me to the student center and get jiggy with it. Over. I really have to be on my way now, okay? I have to run along. Great idea. Because Mark was about to spoil things for me now. Babes, go here. Yeah? Some people just don't get it. Okay. okay? Bye. 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 Okay. What's wrong with you, man? My friend, come and feed you. Just go this way. Yo, my friend, come this way, Joe. You big major Jew, man. I'm on my way, you now. I still didn't hold you. Shut up. Which time is quite quite this now? Hi, Lars. Yes. Um, I just wanted to have a talk with you. We're in the library. And this is not a place for a word or two. Okay, um, okay. I'll wait in the classroom. Oh boy, next time I'll advise her make sure no carry a shoe come over. I remember that. A sociology student like yourself should have known better than to walk into the library with a high-end view like that. That is only something employed by the ignorant. And last, 
I didn't come here for this line of talk. Well, I don't enjoy being distracted from the very important research as well. A research? Yeah. As you can see, I was in the middle of a research, and that's why I was in the library. I see, but he needed to be reminded of all that. Reminded is the wrong word. The right word is education. You need to be educated on the uses of the library. Last, please, okay? <laughs> Just... Nobody goes to the library to make noise or cause a distraction. Nobody does that. But, but I didn't do it intentionally, okay? I just... Your went... iron heels made so much noise in the library to last that whole session. Did you see how the guys are looking at you? Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry if I distracted you. It wasn't my intention, really. I, I, didn't, I didn't mean to do that. It's alright. I mean, you don't have to apologize for anything. I wasn't distracted in any form, really. I think you should be worried about the sixth sense. My sixth sense. Yep. The ability to know bad from good apart from the way God stipulated it in the Ten Commandments. That's your sixth sense. Like, excuse me. Can I jump back into my research? Thank you. About what? About Lizzie. Lizzie, Lizzie. Who's Lizzie? Elizabeth. Oh, oh, that girl. Yeah, yeah, I remember her. Elizabeth. What about her? Are you seriously trying to annoy me or you just don't know? Now, can you keep it good? Are you going to our fences? Mark, listen. Why is the sky blue? Why are roses red, lies? The sky is blue because it's always blue. Rose is red. Most roses are red. Big deal. So why do women fall in love? Many different reasons. Money, car, big houses. They don't be smart as well. Everybody in class knows about that, that. How crazy she is in love with you, except you. How come? You. I should keep talking. But you know guys envy you, right? For what? Because Liz is the it girl. Everybody's crazy about her. And the only dumb one she's in love, we don't even know. Mark, the fact that Lizzie exchanges greetings with me doesn't mean anything. Listen, dude. I, you're in tragic shape. <laughs> I know these things. Exploit while you can. Mark, keep your knowledge to yourself, okay? Just, just do you, man. You should do me now. Yes. <laughs> okay. Dude, I'm going to do me. All right? Look. Talk of the devil. Look at this suckling chick. I mean, look, can't you rough handle this girl just one night? I mean, this girl walk my way, man. I'll cause some damage. Hello. This one. Hi. Hey, what's up, baby? Hi. How are you doing? You both remind me of the Siamese twins. Oh, man. <laughs> bad man. How you doing now? Listen. You know what you remind me of? What? Well, you remind me of a modern day Cleopatra. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's cute. Right? <laughs> okay, that isn't that cute? Yeah. Um, Lars, you don't look cheerful at all. Hope there's no problem. This dude cannot be happy. Not um, while he's in the wrong university. Okay, he's not making his dad happy. Okay, so where should I have been? Should be spiritual, <laughs> no? Should be a reverend in a seminary or something. Oh, I think your friend is right. Seriously, I think he's, he's right. Close. He's close. No, 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 he's no, close. no, no, not you two. Mm. Okay, um, can we? Excuse me? The student center. No, 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 no way. Not today. I am going straight to the library. Yo, 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 dude, hold up a minute. You know you're seriously disturbed? I don't care, man. Whatever. You need evaluation. You need to go see a psychiatrist. I think so. He needs spiritual help. Seriously. <sighs> you know what, baby? There's no sense wasting a beautiful woman's company. Come on. Thank you. Thank you. 
good old fashioned American donut. Thank you. Yeah, let's eat our normal poison. Sorry, man. Of course, your friend. What is wrong with him? Mm, you know, Laz is different. It's like, um, I don't know, like an old man trapped in a young body. You know, a race total kind of guy. <laughs> you mean Saint Anthony? No. <laughs> no, no, not nearly that bad, okay? Stop dissing my friend. Seriously, um, um, seriously, why, why is he like that? I don't get it. Like how? You know, an introvert, very unfriendly, he's always keeping to himself. Why? It's like nothing you've seen before. He's, um, you know, he's just a serious minded person. You know, exactly everything has been prime and proper. Everybody on this campus should be me. Not everybody. I beg to differ. I'm nothing like that. Okay, present company here. Yeah, I like to take life easy. Well, maybe, but you know, um, Mark, I want you to do something for me. Mm, you know, you know, I'm your friend, friend. Just shoot out, 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 deliver. I, I, I want you to tell Lars that I mean no harm, okay? I mean, I admire him so much for that. Like my friend like that, eh? Mm -hmm. Of course you know I do. <laughs> I do, yes. It's you know. I do, you know I do. Okay. Consider me the love angel, I'll go shoot your eye, okay? Mm -hmm, thank you. But seriously, he really has to change, you know. It's, it's not nice. That's last. Don't change him. Accommodate him. <laughs> okay. And by the way, I like one of your friends. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. Ooh. But hey, you know my style. It's point and kill. So if she's out for fun, <laughs> you know, no, 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 no. My friends are for kids, you know, for long-term relationship, and not for point and kill. Oh, that's the way it is. Trade that back. But my own is kill and go. I'm not into that. I don't have friends like that. Okay. Oh, you don't? Yeah, serious relationship. So, Mark, how much does she pay you? What do you mean, how much did she pay me? The girl is in love with you. She has the guts to stand up and say so. You, you're not man enough. So what if I don't like the girl? Is it by force? No, it's not by force. But only a ludo, an idiot, a retarded idiot, will say he doesn't like that girl. Huh? Have you seen that chick? That's his <laughs> FIFA specification. Mark, I am simply not into women. So nobody came into this university to acquire a PhD in women, okay? I still ask, why don't you like her? Are you a, a eunuch or something? Huh? Far from that, far from that. So what is the problem? What if I don't like the girl? I don't like the girl, I don't like the girl. Okay, I understand. But she's coming. Here's your chance to tell her. Hi guys. Hello, baby. Hi, Hilda. Hi. Um my friends call me Lizzie. Yeah, Lizzie. Not Elizabeth. Listen now. Um, <laughs> I have a little appointment at the center. Let me run along, yeah? Museum product. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, take care. Boozo. You're a normal fuck up now. So what do you want? In character, in manner and style and all the good things of life. The supreme excellence is simplicity. Where did you learn that? My father. While you were doing your researches, I was going to my father. Okay, listen to me, Elizabeth. 
I don't mean to be unfriendly, but I hate distractions, okay? Is that what I am to you? A distraction? No, 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 no. Just, just tell me, okay? Tell me and I will take care of you, okay? If I'm a distraction, I will take care of you. Fine. Lizzie, there's one thing I want you to understand. What? That you weren't a distraction like that. You weren't. So what do you think that means? You want to know the honest truth? Yes. I didn't think anything. Nothing. Nothing. I just didn't think anything. <laughs> strange, right? Yeah, strange. True love flows from the heart. Because you know who I'm talking about. Honestly, I don't know who you're talking about. Seriously, I don't. I hate false angels. <laughs> I Seriously, hate false I angels. Don't know. Do you know who I'm talking no, about? No, I don't know. <laughs> tell me. Stop it. Who? Tell me. Stop it. Tell me who? You know.
I live with my parents. It's a big place. <gasps> oh my daddy! Oh, <laughs> oh. You're welcome, my dear. Thank you, <laughs> I never knew you are due for first semester break. Of course I am. That's why I'm here. Yeah, welcome back home. Your daddy has gone out. This is Laz, my friend. Laz, this is my mom. We're actually in the same department in school. Oh, really? Laz, you're welcome. Thank you, mother. Thank you very much. Then you must have to come in and take something. Oh, I really wish I could. Thank you very much. But the tax is waiting for me and I have to leave, so. Okay. When next to call by, don't forget to enter, okay? I will come in next time. You're welcome. Okay, Lizzie, later. Thank you, Thank you very See much. You. Take care. Bye. GGA, I'll tell you something. Until we hammer in this town, Alcada is the best way out. Check that new one now. I'm telling you, man. I have chauffeurs all over town. <laughs> are you going out? Yes, so I'm spinning. Yeah. I'm spinning. Where are you going now? Well, yeah. Lizzie. Well, Lizzie. <laughs> I told you. What I was telling you, that chick is the hottest thing in sociology. You were acting up. Look at you now, you're wet. Well, it's not my fault. You know, back in the day, I wasn't really into ladies. Don't blame me. Mm hmm Lizzie is a different kind of lady. Mm-hmm. Oh, my. <laughs> Stop that. I mean, Lizzie is... She's really different, true. Yeah, well, why now? What made you change your mind now? Well, you know the way she was coming on so strong, mm -hmm. and uh, it was like something I've never experienced before, so I was kind of skeptical. But now... I think she's very ambitious, she's responsible, and we have a lot of stuff to share in common. Is that all? <laughs> hey! Ah! Welcome, 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 welcome. I thought it was going to happen. Listen, there's not like a couple being in love. And when he's mad, that's all. What more can a man ask for? Mark, what do you know? No, no, this is a fact for real. I'm telling you, man, people go through their whole life and they do not find love. Enjoy it, my brother. Okay, okay, okay. I'm on my way there now. So, you think you could use some company? Come on, sure. You've always been my best man. What are you talking about? Well, as long as you think three is not a crowd. Well, no, 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 no. That's I have to show you. You said uh, your mother has gone to the market? Yes, she went to the market. And daddy is almost always out? Almost 24-7, besides Sundays. Freedom, right? <laughs> Freedom! <laughs> You're not serious, you're crazy. Oh, God. Mm. Um, yesterday I was really impressed with your mother's behavior. I mean, she was so receptive. My mom is always like that. I mean, that's just... I mean, it's, she's just like that. She's always like that. I'm not surprised she did that. Yeah, true. Because I, mean, I was amazed. As in, why would a mother allow two guys to come and visit her only daughter? I mean, think about the entertainment that she also provided. Wow, amazing. <laughs> my amazing. mom believes that whoever I bring to my house must be worth the relationship. She must trust you like that. 
Of course, she doesn't have a choice. I'm her only child. Uh -huh. Yes. Don't oh, let my dad catch you saying that only <laughs> child thing. Yeah. Uh, I just remembered. Uh, you know, we have three more days to go back to school. Yes, I've been counting. Just counting? Yes, I've been counting three more days. I know that. I've been counting. You know, we still haven't had the picnic. Laz, must you insist on this picnic? Yes. It's necessary to our relationship, isn't it? Well, we can have all the picnic we want in school. But that's in school. What about the real world? Huh? Come on, let's go out there. Let's mingle with other married couples, true lovers, families, and see how we fare. All we need is the love we have for each other. Nothing else. We don't need no picnic. What no is picnic. love that is not being celebrated? What is it? Come on, we have something good going on. Let's showcase it. Let's show it to everybody. You and I, let's just go out. You know? Huh? Let's go for the picnic. How about the beach? Let's try the beach. Okay, we'll go to the beach. Yeah? Yeah. Do we really need to go out? Yeah. Be nice. Come on. But well, seriously, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll go. <laughs> Not no, we'll go really. Okay, fine. Uh, should I get you something to eat? No. I don't, want to eat. I don't want to eat. I should not have it. I want you to tell me that story oh. you told me the other day. Look <laughs> at this car. Yeah, my dad lets me use the car sometimes. Wow, nice car. I mean, he hasn't got an option. I'm the only child. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Okay, um, when are we seeing? Tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow. I'll come pick you up. So get ready for the picnic. The picnic. Okay, I'll get ready for the picnic. Okay. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> Are you ready? Tomorrow? Tomorrow, I promise. What are you going to wear? Something nice. I don't know. I'll, I'll check, but I don't really know right now. I'll have to be here. Seriously. Yeah. Okay. What should I do? Yeah. <laughs> I'll see you later. Have a nice day. Right on. And be careful. I will. I'm always careful. You know that. Hey, I know that. <laughs> Most people call it scientific breakthrough. Well, I'm not a scientist. I simply call it amazing. Here with me today are two great scientists of our modern era. On my right is Professor Fabian Brown. Professor Fabian is a head research optic session in the School of Medicine, University of Lagos. Prof, you're welcome to this program on this very interesting topic. Thank you, and good evening, my fellow Nigerians. And on my left is Dr. Patrick Ibe. Dr. Patrick is a medical practitioner. He is the director in charge of Hoxin Hospital in Ikui, Lagos State. For those of you who don't know, Hoxin Hospital is a specialist hospital dealing with optics. As you know, the optics is all about the eyes. All the same, doctor, thanks for honoring this program. You're welcome. Good evening, viewers. All right. Let me start with you, doctor. Okay. We all watch that clip. According to Dr. Kessinger, he says he can restore sight surgically. How? Of course. Medical science has improved over the years such that little problems like cataracts are easily corrected via surgery. Oh, well, yes. But this Dr. Kessinger's idea of completely removing a pair of dead eyes, dead in the sense that the owner has no use for them. Yes. 
and now replacing them with a set of new eyes. Yes, ever since Dr. Kersinger has made public assertion, mm -hmm. I've taken my time in study and in research. It is absolutely possible if adequate instruments, precise instruments are employed as well as the right personnel. Now I ask, do you have such instruments in your hospital? Well, not exactly to the precise degree required for this optics transplant. You mean optical transplant? Exactly. Okay. And that is, um, uh, this is a free program. And I wouldn't necessarily go into professional language, but in simple terms, the eye can be removed from another person for another. And it's work perfectly. Absolutely, it was. This is a miracle of medical study and research. The question, the issue has always been, whose eyes will be sacrificed for another to see? Oh yes, a very pertinent question. But it is only selfless people who can be able to donate one eye for another. I mean, both of them seeing fifty percent chances. Well, the issue of eyes is very delicate matter. Okay. In the process of surgically removing one of the eyes, the other could be damaged. Always in the matter where one eye is already dead and it threatens to affect the other. Hmm. Wow. Prof? <laughs> oh yes. I thought Dr. Ikbe was coming to that. Okay. Anyway. Dr. Kessinger's finding is that a dead person's eyes do actually die 12 hours after the owner is dead. Is that medically possible? Um, absolutely. It's always been there for doctors and practitioners. The application has always turned conscientious professionals the other way. Americans themselves only apply this in terms of war like Russians too. But in all, it's been always against humanity to exchange distance. But let me come in. Go ahead. Like I said earlier, I'm not a medical practitioner. <laughs> Hence, my question should come exactly like that of a common man out there in the street. Then ask. This medical transplant, sorry, optical transplant. Yes. Is it possible, or rather effective, for an older eye, like say 70 year old, is used to replace that of a 20 year old, for instance? That's a good question. You see, the eyes, like every other sensitive organ in the body, has a lifespan. And it has been always medically advisable to practice this transplant within the same age brackets. Wow. <laughs> well, I'm certain that it will benefit the 70-year-old person if he gets the leverage of a 20-year-old set of eyes. Well, absolutely. Well, in effect, what Dr. Kessinger had just said is that... Yeah, is that the dead man's eyes are useful to the living, provided the, it will be arrested not later than 12 hours after the owner's death. That's interesting. Very interesting. Very, very interesting. Exactly. All the same, you're welcome. Dad. Yes. Do you think this is possible? Well, those men are professionals. I have no reason to doubt them. Besides, you listen to the American himself, Dr. Kissinger. He was absolutely convincing. I think you should come to Nigeria. Who? Oh? I mean, you, the US doctor. Why? He will make a fortune, why not? I mean, giving dead people's eyes to all these blind beggars around here. And who is going to pay his professional mm. bills? Uh -huh. The beggars. <laughs> okay, that's a question to ask. <laughs> <laughs> now listen, my son, you see, many deaths are avoidable. If everyone had the, the, the resources for proper medical intervention. Exactly. 
But the world is not like that. You see, why many people die of malnutrition, yet others die of obesity? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking this eye transplant thing, making use of dead people's eyes for the living, I think it's absolutely magnificent. And certainly, there are no questions about that. No. Oh, well. Uh, Dad, um, I will need one of the cars tomorrow. What for? I just want to go out with a friend to the beach. All right. If you are free, you can have any car any day. But provided you promise to drive very carefully. Mm -hmm. Straight away. I promise. I promise. Okay, uh, then your mom will give you the car keys tomorrow. Thanks, Dad. I just love nature. Everybody does. Yeah. I mean, just look at the horizon there. You know? And it's romance with the sea. Isn't it beautiful? Yeah, it's, it sounds poetic. Uh, there's an element of poetry in everyone. I mean, especially people like you, myself, studying to be a sociologist. I think the key word here is intelligent. Yes, I mean, you're exceptionally brilliant. Thank you. But I'm left with no choice. How do you mean that you don't have a choice? My father. <laughs> you should meet him. He's such a perfectionist. He was called to the bar at 21. Became a son at 35. That is tough, right? He sent me to the best of schools. You're very lucky, okay? You're so lucky. It's not about luck. Lizzie. It's about hard work and dedication. You know, and, and who you have to answer to. <laughs> you know? 
<laughs> you know, being an heir to Fred Aumbico is such a tough thing. One of his worst moments uh, when I drop in my grades, you should see his face. <laughs> but you're still very lucky to have landed with a father who took pains to see you through the university. Mm -hmm. And that is why I visit the library like the way women visit the salon, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> is it that serious? Oh yes it is. I'd rather get an A than face my dad. That must be really tough. Real tough. But it keeps me on my toes. You know? That is why I got an A in sub 111. <laughs> 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 Bullshit shit. <laughs> <laughs> So much fun. Yeah, I know. I told you, I said, let's go out there, let's showcase our love. And, you know, let the people see what we're made of. Yeah. It was fun, right? Yeah, it was really fun. I, I saw Mitchell at his best. I had so much fun. Thank you so much. Um, so, what we do when we get home? I don't know. You tell me. No, you tell me. I asked the question. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, yeah, um, how's your head? Um, it's much better. Yeah, I mean, with you by my side, <laughs> I can climb Mount Kilimanjaro without ropes. <laughs> you just fall. Oh my god. Oh, oh my head. Ah, oh, not again. Ah! Ah! Wait, wait, wait. Just, just, just take it. Ah! Be careful, be careful. Oh! Um, I, I think it's. I think it's. Let's just pass by oh. your head. Where the hell am I? You're in the hospital. Oh, thank God. For a minute I thought I was dead. Where is she? Who? Lizzie! Okay, wait, let me go get it. Consciousness. Where is this? Let's get your names first. Because some good Samaritans brought you here. No ID, no nothing. My name is Lars. Okay. Lars Oh my god. Oh my god. What is it? Where is she? Are you with the girl? Yes, yes. What, where, what, what happened? She's in a female ward. Relax. Okay? Oh. Fine. Yes, she's alright. In fact, she's in a better condition than you are. Can I see her, please? No, no, no. Not while your drip still runs. It's okay, she come and see me. Her drip runs too. Doctor. Doctor, please. Can you just take this off my hand? I need to see her. Oh, no, you can't. You can't for now. I must see her. She might have problem with the face, especially the skin surface over the eyes. But her internal structure is devoid of injuries. But you? Yes. What's wrong with it? You have minor internal bleeding. 
a minor hemorrhage. I do? Yes. And that is why we are keeping you under intense treatment and constant observation. Oh my God. What is it? My headache. Then you must go back to your bed. No, 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 no. You don't do that. Lizzie. Is that you, Yes. Sweet, sweet. You feel better? Eyes. It hurts so much. It's so painful. I can't see a thing. You'll be fine. Just keep your eyes shut. Yes, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Okay. You'll be fine. It's okay. Let's go back to your world. True love flows from the heart. True love can make you leave again. True love, you never know you're going to go away. It's going to take you so. True love can keep you alive. True love flows from the Before we continue, there has to be deposit made on behalf of both of you. Doctor, can I get my phone, please? I didn't see any phone. I guess the good Samaritan took them. Somebody else might be there before them. Or the phone could still be there. Okay, can somebody get to my house? It's okay. You can say the address. Um, 29. What is important now is your health. How do you feel? Yeah, I'm okay. This is my friend. Where is he? Is he dead? Oh, she's in the female ward. She? Her name is Elizabeth. There's something wrong with her face. Afraid I will be called Sam. And this is my wife, Eunice. Well, welcome, man. Well, I'm okay, David Okoye, and this is my wife. Why don't you come and sit down? So, to what do we owe this August visit? Um, I understand your daughter, Lizzie has been missing since yesterday. Yes. Please, have you seen her? Uh, take it easy. easy, eh? easy. Please, go ahead. Um, Mr. and Mrs. Okoye, I'm afraid we have a situation in our hands. A situation? Yes. We've been able to handle the internal bleeding. But I must recommend taking Elizabeth to a specialist optic center. Or you give me the go ahead to invite a specialist. What are you talking about? Do doctor. What I'm saying is that your daughter is presently in danger of losing her sight. Jesus Christ! 
Did you say losing her sight? I'm afraid. No, doctor. She is my only child. Doctor, can't you understand? Well, I'm sorry. Because it could have been worse. It could have been worse? Yes. Because it was a terrible accident. Now tell me, what could be worse than losing one sight? function again will cost me a fortune. Experience before. I, it was like this sledgehammer, just somebody standing somewhere and just, just banging my head, crashing my brain. Uh, how do you mean? I remember just before I skidded off the road, I had the experience again. This is how my thing. Like, you know, my skull, my hit me. That's good. Did you tell the doctor about this? Hey. But not as elaborate. I still, I still experience it. It's a lost battle. She won't be able to see again. Jesus Christ. What have I gotten myself into? What do I tell my wife? Hey, doctor, please, what, what if we fly her abroad? I think that could solve the problem. She is totally blind. It's a hopeless situation. And there is nothing we can do about it. Unless 
Of course, there is Mira. And you, you unleash your son on my daughter to get her blind. Mr. Koye, let me tell you, that useless son of yours, that irresponsible son of yours cannot move about freely while my daughter is confined to misery without sight. Never! Take it from me. Daughter, can you imagine that? No, it's okay. No, no, what have I done now? down. It's gonna be alright. It's okay. So, what do you people want from me again? Uh, Mr. Koya, please. I understand how you feel. Please take it. You don't understand how I feel. How could you understand how I feel when it is not your child that is blind? Listen, Mr. Koya. I am a lawyer. I have a lot of court experiences. I have always put myself in my client's shoes whenever there's a case. Right now, I am in your shoes and I know exactly how you feel. Please. Darling. Please. Keep out of this. Please, sir. I know I'm responsible for all of this. And if you wish to blame anyone, please blame it on me. Don't blame anybody. Because I am responsible. But I just want to let you know that I love Lizzie so much. So much. And I really wish that I could swap positions with her. I wish I could. Please, sir. Can I see her? Let me ask you this question. Do you believe in God? Are you also a pastor? Oh, come on. Come on. Well, I believe in God, but not when he wants to make another job out of me. No, it's not like that. Listen, every time, every moment in our lives, we must trust in the Creator. My advice is to wait. Just wait until your only child goes blind. Then, and only then will you know how far to trust the Almighty Creator. Excuse me. It's alright. Last. Last, stop it, okay? Just stop it. I'm so sad. I'm so sad. Listen to me, Nazi. You have to stop crying, okay? It's not your fault. That, that's the wish of the Almighty. How can God want an angel like you to be blind? It's not possible. There is a reason for everything. No. No. <laughs> There's no reason for this. It's okay, okay. Come to me, alright? Come, come here. <laughs> Thank you. 
Even without my eyes. <laughs> Come here. It's okay. Oh. What is it? My head. Are you okay? My head. Yes, are you okay? Ah. Uh, oh, my head. What? What is it? What is it? Oh. Uh, mommy, mommy. Yes, what oh, is it? Yes, what is it? My head. Yes, yes, what is my it? head. Yes, 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 my head. Yes, yes, what is it? Such severe headache is always a symptom. But I'm not going to disclose that until the result of the test with Canada comes out. <laughs> okay. Sorry. It's okay. Hey, 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 hey. Jenny, what's up? Mark, I don't know it's you. Were you following me to this? Sweet, I've been following you for a long time. Don't you get it? Don't even flatter me. Only God knows how many days you said that to. Listen, I'm saying it to one girl now, one girl alone. Okay? Talking about holidays, you look hot. This one did you some good. Thank you. Uh -huh. <laughs> Talking about vacations. I haven't seen my boy last anywhere. I haven't seen him and his girlfriend, Lisa. They're still holed up somewhere making out and the vacation is over. You mean Laz is not back to school yet? <laughs> And you know what's more? His phone is switched off. Oh my god. This is really, really strange. I mean, considering how addicted he is to his studies. <sighs> I wish I knew Liz's place. I would have checked on her. I know Liz's place and I can take you there. Really? Yeah. Why, well, don't give me that look. Come on. Just come with me. I have something to show you. Should you just come with me? It's perfect. Look at how we feed each other. Mm -hmm. Hi, son. Yes, dad. Um, your mother says that you hardly touch your meals these days. What is the problem? Blame it on my appetite. <laughs> Lars, you know what? I think you, could, you should go back to school. Go back to school? Of course. You have already missed two months in this semester. Do you want to repeat your second year? But Dad, I drove Lizzie out there on a blind date with a history. Uh, stop that, stop that. With destiny, rather. Whatever. Destiny, history. Now, do you think she's ever going to consider school? Ever? Listen, Lars. Do not blame yourself for her blindness. Don't. So who am I supposed to blame? Huh? Destiny, I've already hinted you. Now listen, my son. Accidents happen every day. And people get hurt. Some even die. That is destiny and that's all. Accidents are meant to happen. And whichever thing results out of the accident is one's destiny with God. That is it. Dad. Listen, the fact that you were driving that car the day that thing happened does not make you responsible for her misfortune. It doesn't. But I was the one who drove her out. I persuaded her to go with me. Oh, God. She didn't want to go. I called her up, I picked her up, and took her to the picnic. And I ended up not getting her home the way I picked her up with her two eyes. Oh, stop that, Lars. Will you stop? What's all this? That I need you to promise me something. If you make me a promise, I will stop. I will stop all of this. Okay, all right. So ask. I need you to promise me that you will go to any length just to ensure that Lizzie regains her sight. All right, okay. 
anything under the sun within my resources i will do it for you my son okay thank you all right now can you not go back to your studies no dad i'm not going back to my studies for as long as lizzie remains blind i'm through with school so better find a way and contact dr kisinga because i'm done You know, I don't get it. I really don't get it at all. Is it enough for you to abandon your, your studies? Come on, you had an accident. An accident for Christ's sakes. Okay, someone got hurt, but it was an accident. Mark, I don't expect this to be coming from you. Not you. Why are you speaking as if Lizzie is some ordinary person or a stranger? This is a girl you used to like yourself. This is my Lizzie we're talking about. I'm aware of that, Lance. As much as I sympathize with your misfortune, I mean, come on, I like Lizzie as well. But is it enough to abandon your studies? Last shit happens all the time. Well, that one came from me. And what's worse, it spotted on somebody else's face, so it's my responsibility to clear it up. And I will. I will go to any length to make that happen. You know, the days I really don't understand you. Come on, just look at me. Look straight at me. Concentrate a little more. Huh? You will see me. I I don't need to concentrate to see you. I can see you. You can see me? Yes. <laughs> Okay, uh, what, what, what color of t-shirt am I wearing? Um, you're wearing a black shirt. <laughs> okay, um, <laughs> in, my, in my pants? Um, you're wearing a, a blue, a, a blue jeans? Wow! <laughs> you, you you can see me. Yes, you can I see can me. See you. you can see me. How did you do it? Um. It's. Did I did I guess accurately? Perfectly. <laughs> to think I just got them yesterday. <laughs> It's a feeling, Lars. Since the accident, you're the only thing I can see in my mind. Amazing. It's amazing. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> Lazy. Uh, Your food. Mommy. Yes, my dear. Thank you, Mom. <sighs> okay. Your mom is the kindest woman I have ever met. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, what do you want? Fork or the spoon? Anyone. Okay, I'll just give you the fork. Ah, there we go. All right. Okay. You want more or you want water? Water, water. <laughs> Here you go. Here you go. On your right, come to your right. Okay. There you go. There you go. Okay. Hey, right there. Right there. Careful. Ah, 
<laughs> Give me a big A. Uh. Okay, A. Uh. Um, there we go. <laughs> Eat up. <laughs> Some more? What's that? Okay. That's okay, I'll give it to you. It's okay? It's alright. It's okay. There you go. Some more? It's okay. Okay. I will forever, forever love you. I mean, Lars and Lisa should not be going through this kind of thing at this point in time of their lives. Well, seriously, I'm sympathetic, but tragedies happen. And he's not handing what wants them. But I told them shit happens all the time. He has to get abreast of things. But he did give me some lame ass excuses as to why he wants to do one stupid thing or the other. Life is not like that. I wish everybody would see it from my perspective. It's, it's really no, he didn't make up blind. Come on. There is nothing wrong with what Laz is doing. He has a conscience and feel responsible for his actions. Don't think everybody will be like you. You are only interested in what benefits you at the long run. And that is selfishness, my dear. Try to put yourself in other people's shoes. That way, you will truly know how it feels. Your father is worried about you, son. About what? You are completely abandoning studies. And I'm worried too. Mother, come on. Can, can, I, can I ask you a question? What? If I was the one that got blinded from the accident, would you be asking me about my studies? I, I don't think so. Maybe you should go to the Okoyes and find out if they are interested in Lizzie's studies. True love flows from the heart. True love can make it leave again. True love, you never know you know when it's going to take you to. True love can give. Alive. Yes, go right here. Hello, son. What is it? Dad, you yes. once promised to get Lizzie back on a straight course. On a straight course? Help restore her sight. Oh, well, if that is the chance, why not? You can do it. I'm offering that chance now. You're offering that chance now? How? Ever since the accident, he has totally become a different person. My dear, you've not seen the half of it yet. Yeah. What is it again? Lars wants to donate his eyes to that guy. What? Do you remember the program we watched on the American doctor capable of eyes transplant? Uh -huh. uh, yes. He wants me to contact the American. Jesus. He wants to offer his eyes to her. Oh, dear God. I don't want to what has come over my son? Oh, 
I am responsible for her condition. And I will not continue to live while she remains blind. Are you God? Elias, are you God? Of course not. Then why do you want to assume his responsibilities? Why do you want to play God? I am not playing God, no. I'm not playing anything. I'm just obeying my emotions. You are out of your mind. Listen to me, son. Don't you ever repeat what you just told me now. I hope you understood that. Your father is so upset with you right now. He's upset with me. Yes, he is upset with you. Did he tell you what the doctor told him about my health? What? I have been diagnosed with a brain tumor. What? What? Yes, what did you just say? No, 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 you're not. No, you're not. Tell me you're just pulling my legs. I'm not playing, man. What's going on? Fred, Fred, why did you hide it from me? I did not hide anything from you. Besides, the final diagnosis has not been completed. So what are you talking about hiding something? You're lying! You're lying! I was right there. I heard the doctor tell you that I have brain tumor. And I'm not going to live more than three months. What? Don't do that. <laughs> well, Dr. Igwe told him the brain cancer is eating me up too fast. <laughs> and I'm not going to live more than three months. What? Mimis! My God! Uh, Mimis! Yes, no, 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 yes, get up, get up, please! Mimis, get up, get up! Get up! Mimis! My God! Come right here! It is amazing, my son, that at this your age, you are not afraid of death. Dr. Igwe has been the family doctor for as long, am I correct? Yes. And he will not be deceiving you for any reason if he told you something, will he? No. Okay. So when he told you that your son has no more than three months to live, he won't be lying to you, will he? Yes, please. please. Yes. Dad, please. I overheard him telling you that I will not live for more than three months. I overheard him. So right now, I'm just living on borrowed time. Yes. Your mother and I love you so much. We love you with all we have gotten in this world. I don't love both of you any less. I love you both very much. But I don't understand why Lizzie should be blind and I should go to the grave with my eyes when I could donate it to her. God, that's what has come over you, Dad. I'm begging you, please. Why are you doing this crime? Why? Because of love? Yes. Because I love her. And secondly, I have a conscience. I was the one driving the car. I am responsible. I drove the car into the tree. I'm responsible for her blindness. How many times will I tell you that you are not responsible for what happened to that girl? I keep telling you. Nothing to tell, Dad. Nothing to tell. I've made up my mind. And I'm going to do it. And if you decide not to keep to your promise, then I'm afraid I have to go home. True love flows from the heart. True love can make you live again. Are you ready? I My baby. Who's <laughs> <Are you> ready? <laughs> Cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it. <laughs> so, did you see your mom? I felt her. Okay. What was she wearing? I am blind, lass. I 
can't see. I can only see you. Easy. I want to make a firm promise. What, what is it? That one day, very soon, you will see it through me. How? Just say amen. <laughs> Just like that. Just demonstrated faith and hope at its utmost degree. Uh, good afternoon, sir. And what the hell are you doing here? Um, I. Okay, I came to see Lizzie. You came to see Lizzie? To enjoy your handiwork, I suppose. Dad, Dad. Liz, keep out of this. You plunged my daughter into blindness, and now you are coming to laugh at her. To enjoy your handiwork, no. eh? Dad, stop it! Just, just stop it! Liz, keep out of this. Young man, I want you to leave this place this minute. Out! Listen. Papa, listen. I don't like this. I don't like a bit of this. Ah. It's okay, my daughter. Sit down. What Sit do down. you ever like? Papa, listen. What is all this? Eh? I don't like this, oh. Sit down, my daughter. No, no, listen, 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 guys. You're my son. I'm my only child for that matter. I am alive and not dead. So issues concerning your life, I make the decisions and not you. No, Dad. No. This is one issue that nobody's going to make the decision for me. Not even you. I have made up my mind and that is final. Let me remind you, young man, that your father is a lawyer. And everything in life has legal definitions. I will not want to betray you in court. Take note. And let's meet in court then. Nice. Mom, no. Dad believes when it comes to issues concerning my life, I don't have a say. And I want to prove Will you shut your tongue? Will you shut up? Can you imagine it? Talk, talking about that, talking about that. Who gave you life in the first place? Is it only by his grace? I have given you the best upbringing that there is. So that you can use it and make better things out of your life. And not for you to just go and throw it away as if you were there when both of us were making you. What's your problem? I've not even started. It's okay, son. It's okay. I know your father did not mean it. You stopped me from seeing him. How could he do a thing like that? I'm going to see him right away. It wasn't daddy. Who then? Her father. And he blames me for everything that has happened. You really love her, don't you, son? Even die for her. Mama, I need your support. I need your support. How? I want her to see things. Mm -hmm. I just need her to see things. Mm -hmm.
School because of a girl? Then grow up. You understand what? Well, as if you're quitting school because, I don't know, something tragic happened? Okay, that's different. So you're quitting school because of a girl you just met? Then you're so dumb. Then you bonehead. Don't you read between the. You know what? Why am I having this conversation? You know what? You don't do whatever you want to do. Dumb score. Is this what you call love? It's nonsense. And yeah, my love sees well. Mama. Mama. Good afternoon, Mama. Good afternoon. How did you get in here? Oh. My husband just left. Oh yeah, I saw him. I saw him drive out. I was hiding behind the wall. <laughs> can, can I see my angel? She's in the house waiting. Thank you. Strict principle. He walks ten months and rests two months of every year. I see. No, oh, is he walking now or resting? He's walking. Bad news, however, is that uh, he hardly lives in the United States. Hey, but can't an appointment be booked with him so that my son could go over there? Remember, we have fifty-six days from the day you broke this news. Mm. I've already initiated that move. I'm waiting for a reply from the American Dr. Schwarz. Schwarz? Yes. That name sounds German. Oh. It's a nationalized German American. Okay. All right. Must I rely on you? Please and please. I'll do my best. Okay. So, how is your wife? Uh, how was your day? It's fine. I miss you too. <laughs> Very much. I love you so much. I love you. With every breath that I take. <laughs> and I'm sticking to my promise. That you will see through me. I hope, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope. But this time, it's going a little beyond that. It's more of... Will... And reality. Will... And reality? Yeah. Okay. Young man, you must leave that. Your father is here. Get up. Mommy, why? Your father is here. Alright? Your father is here. Lizzie, Lizzie, I'll. It's okay. I'll see you again. It's okay. 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 something. Okay, maybe forgot how to dress up well. What is wrong with what I'm wearing? Okay, let's get to the dressing room and I will tell you. 
Cancel it. What? Cancel it? Are you out of your mind, lads? For goodness sake, Dr. Swaz is the best brain surgeon in this whole world. And he's going to give you your life back, son. Mother, there is no life to live without Lizzie being there to behold it as well. There is nothing to live for. Um, anyway, you are leaving in three days' time to the States, and that is my own arrangement, okay? Not getting your life there. I've been saying over and over again, all I live for is Lizzie to see through me. Now listen, if it is all about you directing your eyes to that girl, I won't let you do it. Whether you live or die, or even whether I live or die, you won't do it last. Did you hear me? Then come to court. I should come to court. See me in court. May I remind you, little boy, that all in my 25 years of legal practice, I have never dropped one of 165 legal battles. Did you get that? I have never. Then, Dad, I think you should gird your armor. Because this is one case I will win or die trying. Lars. Lars! Understood me the last time we had this conversation. It's nothing like that. I thought I was some unfeeling madman. That's not how it is. I'm a realist. I like to look at things from the right perspective. Okay, how would you feel if I tell you Lars is in the process of taking his father to court? You mean his father is taking him to court? <laughs> that is how it ought to be. After all, he's a son. No, sweetheart. It's the other way around. That is the madness there. Lars the knucklehead is taking his father, the son, to court for not allowing him to donate his eyes to Lizzie. It's bizarre, right? That's serious. I mean, does he want to go blind himself? Of what use is he to the girl without his eyes? That's a problem. Now you know why I'm being uptight about this whole thing. He's just acting so stupid. I don't know what he wants to do. I mean, what, what is his plan? He's so stupid. Does he want to be another rich child, learn to play the piano and serenade all the days of his life? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So what are you going to do now? Leave him to his fate? No. Not just like a brother to me. I'm just going to go over there one more time. Try to dissuade him and see if it makes sense. It's just it's just so stubborn. You know what it gets like. Doubts, this particular case might as well enter the record books as being the fastest to have transited from first mention to first hearing. And that is because of the sensitive nature of this pathetic case before us. I do not wish to jump the gun, but let's just sit and watch things unfold. Cancer? Thank you, Your Worship. You may proceed. Like you mentioned earlier, we have a situation in our hands. The case of a young man who wishes to donate his own, and mark my words, his own eyes. But his father would not let him. Your Worship, this young man has every reasonable intention, and I am appealing to this court 
not only to hear us out, but to accede to this urgent humanitarian request. Why not? Why are you doing this? What for? Mark, when you were asking me to go out with Lizzie, at one point, did it ever occur to you that I would say yes? Did it? Well, this is different now. No, she, she's blind. Mark, stop it! Stop it! Stop what? From what point are we looking at this now? You're the only one that don't want to see reason. Everybody knows she's blind. Even the girl knows she's blind. You are the only one. Who cares? I was responsible. For what? What, what were you responsible for? It was an act of fate. It's called an accident. It can happen to anybody. It's a fate. You can't change that. Your fate is different. Look at the worst case scenario. How about if something had happened? Like how about if you had died as a result of this accident? What shows I wouldn't have preferred that? What shows? Relax, you're really beginning to fit me out with all this kind of talk. What is wrong with you now? Come on! Look, look! The pessimist is around the corner. Can't you finish school first? Mark, read my lips. I don't care! I care, lads. I'm like a brother, I care. Your dad cares. So does your mom. You need to care about people that care about you. You don't understand, do you? What do you call this man? Look at the point, bottom line. Okay, the fact that you want to donate your eyes to a woman you barely just met, and you're dragging a father that's caught it for you and taking care of you all through your life to court. Mark, the lady that is blind is Lizzie. My Lizzie! Take your hands off me. Are you out of your mind? Are you out of your mind? You know what? You're really acting work right now. I'm telling you, you're acting really crazy. What is wrong with you? You're attacking me because of someone... Alright, you know what? I just made a mistake. Do whatever you want to do. You know what you really need? You don't even need us. You need evaluation. You need to lock you up somewhere. And you don't have to donate to me your eyes. Donate your dick to me. Oh, no, you're finally completely satisfied. In the name of Labour parties, has it occurred to you? With due respect, sir, I have always admired you greatly from afar. But on close up, believe me, I have another impression. I was only doing my job, hired by my client to defend him in court. And what kind of a legal practitioner will undertake a battle to lead his client, the very client that pays his bill, to the grave? What kind of legal practitioner? Is sir, I am a professional, and this is. An occupational exercise. Is that so? Yes. So it is all about occupational expression. Yes. At the expense of a boy yet to be 22. But the legal code certifies anyone who is 18 and above to be an adult. So you want to benefit from your wrong? Eh? This is not all about cost and benefit analysis, sir. Then what is it? No, what is it? Now listen. Lars is my only child. I have labored all my life to build an empire for him. Then one day he came up with this crazy idea of plucking his own eyes. Now let me ask you, would you have stood behind him to actualize that if he were your own son? Would you have done that? For your information, sir, I am not charging a dime. But if he is responsible for the damage and he wants to repair it, so be it. Why do you want to stop him? Damn! Yes, you are a lawyer and you know what accidents are. You do not have to be a senior advocate to know that. Do you? Oh, you take your hands off me! Aren't you supposed to be a learned gentleman of a noble profession? Or is this what it takes to be a, a senior advocate? It's just to let you know how hard you are pulling me.
throughout my 25 years in this court business, I have never been as emotionally attached as in this one. A young boy, yet to be 22, in his second year in the university, who went through the best nursery, primary and secondary schools in the state, of course, made possible by a most loving father, uses his father's car, rams into a tree, wakes up after 16 hours in a hospital with bruises all over him, including internal bleeding, discovers that his girlfriend, sitting in the passenger seat with him, lies down unconscious in the female world of the same hospital. It is discovered later that this girlfriend has lost her sight in the process. Only for this boy to feel he was directly responsible for this girlfriend losing her sight. And of all bizarre things, this boy gets a court injunction, restraining his father, stopping him from taking his own eyes. That boy is my only child. Your worship, Lars has no right to take such decision for the very fact that he is still hugely dependent on his parents. Objection, Your Worship! Overruled. I just want to repeat my promise that you will see through me. Is this about hope? Will and reality? Well, it's it's a combination of all of that. Except now, um, we've gone beyond reality and will. It's more of belief now. We are what we believe we are. You think so? Yeah. I know so. Most things that we believe usually happens once we believe it. I just want you to believe. All right. All right, I believe. You believe? Yes, I believe. Come on. Let's go outside and get fresh air. Okay. All right. I came here to warn you to hold your mad son. If I see him near my daughter again, if I see him anywhere near my residence. <laughs> hey. mm. Bravo. Oh, oh, you think I am there for a comedy show, eh? Well, you will soon have to change the orientation. Your son took my daughter's eyes away. What else is he looking for from her? To cut off her head? Have you finished? I have not finished. I am just starting. Then, I beg you to please come to the court tomorrow. 
come to God. Because well, I have no time for such nonsense. Because I can't imagine myself sitting down listening to lies and deceit. Where oftentimes the innocent one gets convicted. I see. Is that the way you perceive legal practice? Well, that's the way it is. Then come to court tomorrow morning. And you will have a change of loyalty. That is one case you must witness. And immediately after that, you will head straight to this office for us to resume this issue. Well, I came there to warn you and not to listen to this promise. You have been warned. Make it before 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. Your Worship, my client is in the dock and I intend to prod him on. By all means, do. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Lazarus, could you tell this court why you intend to donate your pair of eyes to one Miss Elizabeth Okoye? Because she's a friend, a very special friend. And I know I am responsible for her blindness that happened after the accident on our way from the beach. Now, tell me, did she agree to go on this picnic with you willingly? Eventually, yes, my lord. Eventually? What about initially? She wasn't comfortable at first, so I had to persuade her. And she yielded? Yes, my lord. Why? Because she believes in me. I ensured her of her safety, and more especially because she loves me. Mother! Could you tell the Honorable Court what transpired that fateful day on your way back from the picnic? That fateful day, on our way back from the picnic, I had a severe headache. And even though Lizzie tried to convince me to stop the vehicle, I told her I would manage and I would be fine. Did you manage to get fine? No, my lord. My headache developed into a migraine. I lost control of the car and I skidded off the road. you have to prove your case beyond every reasonable doubt. Cancel! Your Worship, I am sorry for this mild drama. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Worship. So, what exactly happened when you suddenly found yourself in the hospital? I realized that if only I had listened to Lizzie, the accident wouldn't have happened. Why do you say so? Because the accident was entirely my fault. And? And when the doctor pronounced her blind, I almost killed myself. Thank God you didn't. So what prevented you from committing suicide? The hope that if I continue living, Lizzie will see through me one day. Order! And now, through the medical expertise of an American doctor, if somebody is willing to donate his or her eyes before death, she would see again. How is that possible? How? By how, I mean, how is the donation process going to be? Is the person going to be alive or dead? Well, according to Dr. Kissinger, if only the death is within 12 hours, the dead person's eyes are still useful. And if that person is willing to donate his or her eyes, she would see again. And have you found such a willing person? 
Yes, my lord. Can you tell this honorable court who that person is? I am the one. I am willing to donate my eyes to you. Order! Order! So, tell me, if you give your pair of eyes away, how are you going to see from then on? I have been diagnosed of tumor. A brain cancer. And as I stand here today, I have only 27 days to live. And I would not have use of my eyes then. What are you going to be doing between now and the next 27 days? I want to leave a will, a legacy to humanity, to make sure that this young, vibrant, and beautiful lady known as Lizzie Okoye regains her sight. your own son, your only son, Fred, your only child to court. You have made me a laughing stock in this neighborhood. First, I did not drag Lars to court. Then second, if I let him donate his eyes to that girl, he is going to die. But he's going to die anyway. I see. Now listen, woman. If you believe that I'm going to sit down here and watch my only child die, then you can believe anything. What is going on? We have enjoyed 30 years of happiness in this family. Till, till now. God, what is happening? As your father loves you and you love it. Then mom, he should respect my one and only wish. He shouldn't respect a wish that will see you dead. Come on, son. Mother, I have only 24 days to live. And he knows it. He's only being selfish. What difference would it make if I'm buried without my eyes? What difference would it make? It has. Mother, please. Brain tumor is incurable. I have been reading a lot of it extensively. And I know at this stage there is nothing anyone can do for me. I've accepted it. What good are my eyes to me if I'm buried without them? First, last my son is still attached to my apron springs. He has nothing yet on his own to make a will. And he has no right to decide on what happens to his body should he drop dead today. Cancel. Your worship. You are a senior advocate of Nigeria? Since 25 years ago, you watched. Good. So, why whip up unnecessary sentiments by shedding tears? It's not all about sentiments, your worship. It's all about emotions. I am not an actor. I didn't induce the tears. They came on their own. I am a respondent and I'm stating my case. Yes, I am a senior advocate, no doubt about that. And above all, I am a father. I am trying to stop my only child from untrue suicide. Objection, Your Worship. 
my learned colleague, my learned senior colleague, is trying to mislead this court because the issue of suicide is not at play here. This case is all about a courageous young man who loves humanity with such a passion. He wishes to donate his eyes in the event of his death. Your worship, I am really sorry for not being able to hold back on my emotions. It is rather sad to know that we are going to lose such a dynamic young man, such a tender age. And it is most unfortunate. Are you sustaining the objection you worship? I'm calling for a recess. God! Dear Lord, your word says those who put their trust in you will never be put to shame. My father in heaven, my family is tearing up us. God, I call you to intervene, Lord Jesus Christ. This court case is destroying my family, my Lord and my God. Father, please come to our rescue. Don't let this family be torn apart, oh Lord. Don't let my family be destroyed by this court case, Father. Come to our rescue, Lord. Come to our rescue, Father. Come to my aid. Don't let this happen to me, Lord Jesus Christ. Don't let this happen to me, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. <laughs> Lazarus Ombiko, you said you love humanity. Yes, my lord. Good. Your worship, please permit me. This man is blind and he needs help more than anybody. If your love for humanity is real, lies, assure me that you will donate your eyes to this man here and arrest my case. In the case of charity, I think the donor has the right of choice. And I want to donate my eyes to Elizabeth Okoye. One reason is because she's my first choice. I'm sure if I had another set of eyes, the blind beggar here would have benefited. And my second and most important reason is because I am the cause of disease blindness. You are not. You are not. Objection, your wife. Do you know that young man sitting over there? He's my son, my lord. Good. Pretty good. Do you have another son? No, my lord. I see. Do you have another child? No, my lord. 
Are you aware of your responsibilities as a mother? Objection, Your Worship. My learned colleague is derailing and being rather suggestive. Sustained. Counsel, please be direct to your cross-examination. I'm sorry. I see I'm not only the respondent, but I'm also a father. And most importantly, I am a husband. Mrs. Omobiko. Yes, my lord. Yes. Did you ever give your consent to your son's bizarre and irresponsible act of reading himself of his eyes? Objection, your worship. Sustained, counsel. All right, your worship. I will rephrase my question. You should rather reshape your emotions. Mrs. Anwiku, do you give your consent to your son's obsession of losing his eyes? Do you? Don't talk like that. Don't talk like that. I have had time to think it over. You taking your eyes? No, I am not buying it. I'm not. Lizzie, you, you don't understand. Understand what? Understand what? Dr. Kissinger will be in Nigeria any moment. He will perform the operation and you will regain your sight. Isn't that a good thing? Just stop it. Stop it! You want to exchange your eyes and go blind? Never. No, no. You will not understand what is happening. You don't understand. Understand what? Listen to me. Listen to me carefully. I have been diagnosed with brain tumor. I have less than 10 days to live. I will die. But I need you to see through me. Never! No! Then you don't love me. You don't love me. You know I love you. You know I love you. Then accept you my know eyes. I love you. Accept my eyes, Lizzie. Please accept my eyes. No. Let my eyes be the bee that you see. Please, Please don't do this. Please don't do this. Please don't do Tell me how do I live my life without you? Your worship, I have good news. See, my son can live again. The doctor is coming in seven days' time to perform the operation. What guarantee of success? Oh, pretty high. Very, very high. So, what do you want? Well, time. Time. Another adjournment, please. Another adjournment. Please. And if the operation fails and your son dies? No. No, he won't die. He won't. He won't die. I can give my verdict. 
It doesn't stop you from taking him to the theater. Your worship, you do not know the son that I have. He can kill himself to, to, to forestall any move the moment the, 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 the judgment is given in his favor. Please. All right. Give me a good reason in court tomorrow, and I'll give you 10 days. Oh, that's good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, I, I think I should be running. Thank you very much. case we have had is a straightforward one. My client has every right to his fundamental human right. Come on, money now. Come on, help me. has arrived uh, last night and we must commence operation immediately if there's going to be any chance of selling him. So what are we waiting for then? He is due in an hour. It will still need your approval since your husband is temporarily unavailable. Doctor, just show me where to sign and I will sign.
God is great. After everything, our son lives. Perhaps that was why we went through all the trauma and made all the sacrifices to cure him of tumor. It's a miracle. Yes. <laughs> Lassie, you don't seem happy. No. Lizzie is still blind. How can I ever be happy? How can I ever be happy? And if I die today, I know by Mr. Damien Ufa will carry out the court's wishes. He will make sure he's respected. Yes. Mother, I will not and cannot continue to live for as long as Lizzie remains blind. Jesus. Nothing will change it. Yes, darling. So what are we celebrating? Freedom. Freedom? Yes. From all the travels we've been through since the accident. I see. Yes. That's beautiful. <laughs> Excuse me, guys. I love that. I couldn't see you. <laughs> <laughs> Am I sure you don't have a hand in this with your mother? No, Dad. <laughs> I don't know what is happening. Okay. Well, this is strictly for the mother of the house. I want us all to toast to happiness. To the madam of the house? To happiness. To happiness? <laughs> to happiness. Oh, that's good. Mm. Yes. Drink up. Be merry. Yes. I have lots and lots of them in the fridge. <laughs> I'm, I'm drinking. Drink. Drinking. <laughs> Be merry. and drink.
to arrest husband and son. I took the only option out. I can't live to see the trauma again. Lars is planning to kill himself to donate his eyes to Lizzie. I can't stand that. Perhaps he has every reason. People have principle and I have come to respect my son's principles. I just took an overdose of poison. I'm dying to live. If my son lives, I live. Please, take my eyes immediately for Lizzie's transplant. I urge both of you to live in harmony. Fred, please forgive me. I love my family and this is my sacrifice for my husband and son. Jesus! Both of whom I love ah, so dearly. You miss why? It's immediately. Ah. Yours ever, wife and mother. No! Ah, was it? God. Don't go. Uh, what shall we do now? Why? Why? I'm sorry to do this, Dad, but I have no choice. I am the cause of what Lizzie is going through now. Please, use my eyes as a transplant for her. I cannot live to watch her die in agony. I love you, Dad. Mom, I had to drink this poison. It's my only option left. Goodbye. I love you both. Mother was the most charming woman I've ever known. And she died to give me life. To give you life? Yes. Because I bought the poison to use it the very next day. With instructions that they should give my eyes to you. But she beat me to it. Want us to die because of me? 
Yes. Yes, I wanted to die for you. And I would have died for you. I would have died for you. My mother thought otherwise. And I know she's in heaven. Peaceful. Can't you see? 